Washington to take the opening tip off against Michael Glover. Glover has won all but one tip to start a game this season and gives away three inches to Washington. The ball up in the air, and sure enough, Iona wins. Easily. He won that tip, did Glover. Gales in the first <laughs> half from left to right as Machado brings it across the timeline now in the hands of Rashawn Dwight. High post to Aleo Rodriguez. One dribble, then on the weave, Machado. Down underneath, a turnaround by Glover. No, but he drew an immediate foul against David Imes. And Michael Glover, just 16 seconds into the game, will get himself a pair of free throws. That was very easy. Machado saw that uh, Glover had Imes really close to the basket. Imes got behind Glover instead of fronting him. No denial of the empty pass. Easy play for Machado to get to Glover. Now Glover, 61% shooter from the free throw line. And the shot is on the way and around and in. So we do have our first score of the night. Gales with a 1-0 lead. Hofstra from the Colonial Athletic Conference, 7-4. and four. Iona from the MAC, 2-0 and in MAC Conference, which uh, resumes on Monday up in Siena. Second free throw by Glover is good, and the Gales off to a 2-0 lead. Light pressure in the backcourt. Iona showing trap, but not springing it. 1-2-2 two, two zone. Back-to-back -back passes between Jenkins and Moore. Now across the midcourt line, Brad Kelleher has got it. And the Gales set up into the 1-2-2 two, two zone. Kelleher between the circles. As Moore comes out for the ball, instead they angle it left side to Jenkins. One dribble, then back in the middle to Moore. Now Kelleher with 10 on the shot clock. He goes cross court to Moore, nine on the clock, all on the perimeter. Kelleher with five between the circles, pick waiting by Washington. Kelleher will drive, foul line, jumper, no good off the rim, long rebound, taken off by Machado for Iona. Fast break for the Gales. Machado all the way through on Kelleher. Last second dish off to Glover, who drew the foul. Oh, what a nice setup by Machado, finding Glover underneath the basket, and Glover right back to the line for a pair. Machado had a mismatch. When he got the ball, Kelleher was on him. Kelleher slower than Machado. He realized that. He had an open court, broke down, got to the basket. Defense finally caught up to him and made that beautiful pass to Glover. And the foul against Jenkins. If you're Hofstra, you don't want to see that. Glover on the line. His third free throw is good. He must have heard you the fact that he wasn't shooting free throws so well because he said his first three tonight. Three nothing. Iona. 58 seconds in. One more for Michael Glover. As he bends at the knees, the shot is on the way and short. No good. Made one of two, and the rebound was pulled off by Michael Moore. Three nothing. Iona. Jenkins in the backcourt now to Kelleher across the timeline. Return to Jenkins and Iona in a two-three. Kelleher. Getting the start tonight, as opposed to Dewan McMillan, who has started much of the year. Here's Jenkins, gives it away. The steal by Smythe. We pass to Machado. Kelleher is back. Scotty drives, put it up, no good. Tip no. Rebound batted around. Two golden opportunities, and Iona comes away empty. On the other end, Moore over Smythe. The bank, no good. The follow up by Jenkins. He missed it. Rebound batted outside. Jenkins able to run it down for Hofstra, so both teams missing very easy shots. Hofstra having trouble reading the 2-3 zone of Iona, I think, right now. Here is Imes faking right, going left, driving in the lane, and is held on the play. And it's going to be Scott Machado's foul for Iona, the first against the Gales. Well, we see them changing the backcourt with Kelleher and Jenkins in the backcourt. They move more up front. Kelleher has not played all that much, missed all of last year, suspended first 10 games this year, only about the fourth game he's played this season. Non-shooting foul, Hofstra will inbound, Imes had the ball batted out of bounds, and they rule last touch by Aleo Rodriguez, so they'll try it again from the corner just behind the Hofstra basket. Kelleher will inbound, looking for the pride, inbounds to Imes along the left sideline, hands back to Kelleher. They've got a virtually a whole shot clock to work with. Here is Kelleher left of the key, watched by Machado, holds it over his head, bounce pass to Imes, lost it, the steal by Rashawn Dwight, head of the field, Jenkins let him go, and Dwight jams it in to make it 5-0 Iona, and Mo Cacera has seen enough just two minutes into the game, Hofstra taking timeout as Iona has jumped out to a 5-0 lead. Good time out there because Hofstra was very hesitant, very timid, didn't seem to be really have the heads in the game. Where Iona coming off the game against Vermont where they lacked intensity, have come out with a lot of intensity on the defensive end, which has allowed them to force turnovers and drive the ball to the basket. Gales are a much better team when they can get the ball to the basket because they're not shooting the ball that well from the perimeter, but when they're able to drive the ball with their guards getting to the hoop or Glover on the inside finishing, they're much more effective offensively. And, and Casara's seen that. 
Right now, his team is having trouble trying to get inside the two, three zone. All they're doing is standing out in the perimeter and, and throwing a shot up and hoping to get a second or third opportunity and a rebound. Familiar face on the Hofstra bench, assistant coach Steve DeMeo back in this building. Used to be an assistant with Tim Welsh, both here and at Providence. Yeah, 14 years I think he spent with Tim. Now Kelleher drives across the midcourt line. Iona with a 5-0 lead. Hofstra ball from right to left in the first half, and Iona stays in a 2-3 zone. Jenkins and Kelleher. Now angles at left side to Moore, back in the middle to Kelleher. 18 on the clock, bounce pass down low. Washington thought about a shot, no. Instead, corner, here's a three-pointer up and good. Put home by Michael Moore to tie the ball game, or, or rather get Hofstra on the board. Iona goes alley-oop, and Rodriguez scores on the other end from Machado's setup. Boy, the Gales are really attacking in a hurry and taking advantage of Hofstra's so far leaky transition defense. 7-3, nearing the 17-minute mark. Iona by four. Moore now to Kelleher. Pick waiting by Imes. Left of the key. They go to Imes. 18-foot straightaway jumper. Bottom of the net by David Imes. Nice job by Kelleher to move the defense around. Create space for Imes. 7-5. to five. Iona leads by two. Ball fake by Smythe. Dribbles back up top. On the weave goes to Rashawn Dwight. Now one more pass. Machado goes baseline. Glover dribbles and is called for traveling as he tried to maneuver around David Imes, so a turnover against Iona. Well, I thought Imes bumped him, and that's why he traveled. But no call of a foul. Substitution now for the Pride. Coming in the game, Stephen Waconi, and Waconi replacing Greg Washington. Yeah. Iona with a two-point lead, loop across the timeline. Imes now dumps it back to Michael Moore, the transfer from Fordham. Gales man-to-man -man this trip down the floor. Kelleher left side, Moore back up top. Kelleher gets a pick from Waconi. Now to a cutting more, all this on the perimeter, starts to drive, spins, turn around from 13, no good. Rebound, batted around, and finally picked up by Alea Rodriguez. Ahead we go to Smythe, further right, Rashawn Dwight driving through the lane, then back out. Here's Machado, left corner, Smythe faking a three, drives closer, top of the lane, Dwight had it knocked away, loose on the floor, somehow it ricocheted to Michael Glover. And the Gales keep the possession alive. Now Glover backs in on Waconi, spins to his right, then back to his left and scores. Up and under move by Glover. He had a mismatch. He said, I'm not going to kick it out. I'm going right for the rim and score, and he did it. And Glover now with five. Gales with a 9-5 lead. Just over four minutes gone by. Kelleher bounce pass to Jenkins up top. Jenkins has not attempted a shot yet. Now Imes, foul line jumper, good. His second field goal. Good job by Imes to find the seam and the gap in that zone. Match up 2-3, the Gale played then. 9-7, Machado driving on Kelleher, put it up, no, but got knocked to the floor, and it will be a shooting foul for Scott Machado. The third foul against Hofstrom. We'll take a break now, 15-39 to go first half. It is Iona 9 and Hofstra 7. Back in a moment, icgales.com. Holiday Inn Select in downtown Stanford is the official hotel sponsor of the Iona Gales. Whether just visiting Iona or coming to cheer on the maroon and gold, the Holiday Inn features recently renovated guest rooms and suites that reflect the crisp, contemporary design of an urban downtown getaway. Each room features high-speed internet and wireless connectivity, in addition to access to a health and fitness center, indoor pool, business center, and 700 bar and grill, a casual dining atmosphere with a pub-style cuisine. The Holiday Inn Select downtown Stanford is conveniently located at 700 East Main Street in downtown Stanford, just off exit 8 of I-95. Holiday Inn Select downtown Stanford is also accessible by Metro North's New Haven line. For more information or to make a reservation, call 203-358-8400. Having a party? Well, smart shoppers know the name Shannon Beverages of New Rochelle. Shannon proudly carries the largest selection of domestic imported and craft brewed beer in Westchester. All your favorite brands of soda and ice, too. Stock up now. Our discount prices can't be beat. Party balls. And for your convenience, quarter kegs and half kegs are always available. Remember, for discount beer and soda, all the top brands, domestic and imported, Shannon Beverages, just a quarter mile south of Iona at 437 North Avenue in New Rochelle. Call 632-1115. That's 632-1115. Shannon Beverages. Got a good one going on here early on at the Heinz Athletic Center. The Gales leading the Hofstra Pride 9-7, along with Gary Stanley. I'm Ed Ingalls. Gales came out with a much different attitude for this game as opposed to Vermont. They were attacking on the offensive end, very aggressive. Uh, really, you could see their heads were into this game. But the last three trips down for Hofstra, they have found soft spots in the Gales zone and hit their shots. So Hofstra right back in the game, Gary. Another change for the Pride. 
Shemai McClendon in the game, freshman coming off the bench. Scott Machado, first of two, it is up around and in. Machado is shooting much better on the foul line, made 18 of his last 22. Getting back on track where he was such a good free throw shooter last year, but struggled early on this year. Did, did you get a new calculator for Christmas? No, should I have one? You oh, do my these brain numbers is my off brain. the tap. Okay. Well, you know. Second one by Machado, good. So the Gales have uh, hit five out of six from the free throw line. Lead 11 to seven, four and a half gone by. McClendon goes backwards now, and Kelleher will bring up. Brad Kelleher not across the midcourt line. Now he is with the pass to McClendon. Now back in the hands of uh, Kelleher, 2-3 zone for Iona. Shot clock still at 20, deep along the right. Ball in the hands of McClendon. Top of the key, knocked away, extended for Washington. The steal by Machado, then Scott dropped the ball. We run the other way, two on two. McClendon, foul line jumper off the run, in and out. Battle for the rebound, out of bounds as Rashawn Dwight and Washington went down in a heap and they rule it off Dwight. Nice job by Dwight to get back defensively. What looked like an easy 10-foot jump shot for Hofstra right there to defend it. Hofstra ball, new shot clock. They said Iona had possession. In the corner, Kelleher, three from the wing, in and out. Glover pulls down the rebound for Iona. Gales by four. Glover dribbles, now hands to Rashawn Dwight, and he'll dump it back to Scott Machado. Double high post, Glover and Aleo Rodriguez. Machado between the circles, goes right side to Smythe. Pick waiting by Aleo Rodriguez. Smythe cuts in the middle, shoots straight on three, no. Rebound picked up by Hofstra's McClendon. Now to Kelleher. Kelleher now to McClendon. Ball fake on the right side, driving on Dwight. Open man on the left. They can't get the shot away. Backing in is McClendon. He'll dump it back to Kelleher. He's running the point tonight for Hofstra. A new job for him. Came as a two guard, now playing the point. Shot clock at 15, high post Greg Washington angles the ball left. Here's Jenkins spinning, quick move, the bank no good. Battle for the rebound underneath, loose ball, ends up out of bounds, and it will belong to Iona. Nice job by Smythe Gary defensively not to let Jenkins get to the rim. Put good pressure on the potential All-America. Wacconi and now Kelleher sit down. More changes for Hofstra, Iona remains the same. Jenkins very quiet in the early going for Hofstra. Has only taken one shot, and that was in and out. 2-3 zone now. Hop, uh, Hofstra comes out of the man to go to the zone. Michael Moore back in the game. Aleo Rodriguez flips left side. Machado open. Three. No good. That was too much of a line drive. No trajectory. Was standing flat-footed. One-handed for shot. Here's Moore getting the rebound. Goes to Charles Jenkins. Bad a man this time for Iona. Jenkins will back away from Aleo Rodriguez. Just inside the midcourt line, pick waiting by Washington. Jenkins goes to Washington, open, 17-footer, good. Washington can make that shot out to 18 feet. He's uh, shooting better from the perimeter than inside, though he's 6'10". And it's 11-9, Iona's lead down to two. Two-three zone again for Hofstra, Machado looking back as they have to do in this first half at the Iona bench. Smythe now to Aleo Rodriguez. Glover coming out for the ball, goes to Machado on the left. Machado stutter moved underneath the basket, kick out to Smythe, and he'll take a three, but whistled down before. And we had a call against Iona. Three second violation or palming, it's against the Gales. As Machado carried under the basket, that a foul, it's a palming violation against Machado. Iona with a two point lead, nearing the 13 minute mark, first half. Jenkins across the midcourt line for the pride, bounces to Washington, now back in the hands of Jenkins. Charles Jenkins just inside the midcourt line. Gales again in a man-to-man. -man. Jenkins dribbling idly. Now fires on the left side. McClendon will drive on Rodriguez. Pull up from the side. No good. Rebound Machado for Iona. Pushes the ball up ahead. Machado bumping into two Hofstra players. Knocked to the floor. And they're going to call a jump ball. And the alternate arrow will give it to Hofstra. And Machado, who fell on his shoulder, getting up a little bit gingerly. Well, nice job that time. But Hofstra had two defenders waiting for Machado. Would have been better able to serve if he had passed the ball to somebody because he, he attracted the defense. He had the wings open. That's what Tim Cruz wants to see Machado get the ball to somebody in the wing for the open shot. So the Gales, after a quick start, have hit a little bit of a bump here. Having trouble scoring, 11-9, just under 13 to play. Jenkins in front of the Iona bench. Charles Jenkins goes up top, Moore, ball fake, dribbles to the free throw line, then under the runner, good, by Michael Moore with the right hand. Nice move by Moore to beat two defenders that time and hang at the end of it to make it. And Hofstra has tied the game at 11 apiece. Michael Moore with five points. 
We're about to see Scott, uh, Chris Pelcher for Iona. Now Machado goes up top. Glover, straightaway three. It's a rarity for him, and he missed it. Rebound by Moore. Moore brings up. Hofstra looking for their first lead. Now to Charles Jenkins on the right side. Imes goes back to Jenkins. High post, knocked away, stolen by Rashawn Dwight for Iona. Made all made possible. A beautiful play by Rodriguez. Dwight fires to Machado through the lane. Then the kick out for Jamel Jenkins just in the game, but the pass not on. Now Machado gets it back corner. Three ball, too long. Rebound batted around, and Michael Moore gets it for Hofstra. Machado off target on his last two shots from downtown. 11 all, now a long three-pointer by Moore. What a brick that was, way off. Rebound by Jamel Jenkins starting up for Iona. Looks to his left, spins to his left, and now waits for Aleo Rodriguez to get back in the picture. Good move by Jenkins to pull it out. It wasn't there, bring it back out, set it up. Jenkins in a huge shooting slump, has lost his starting job. Here's Rashawn Dwight driving the right baseline all the way through for the dunk. Oh, what a nice job by Dwight. They needed that. Gale's with almost four minutes without a basket. Second basket by Rashawn Dwight. Iona back by two. Michael Moore, the runner from 12, in and out. Battle for the rebound. And Iona screwed that one up as Glover got entangled with Aleo Rodriguez, and neither got the ball. And it will belong to Hofstra when we come back. 11.09 remaining, first half. Iona leading the pride of Hofstra, 13 to 11. Back in a moment, icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. ICGales.com is the official online home for Iona College Athletics. Keep up with Iona's 22 NCAA Division I athletic teams 24-7. Iona Insider provides live and on-demand streaming audio and video content from game broadcasts to coaches shows and more. Check out the photo gallery to see action shots from the field of competition and other athletic events. You can show your maroon and gold pride with official merchandise from the Gale Shop or a photo from the official photo store. There's so much more that you've got to check out icgales.com. Go Gale! So halfway through the first half, the Gales are nursing a 13-11 lead over the pride of Hofstra. Along with Gary Stanley on that Ingles. Early on, the Gales came out very high energy, able to get the break, able to force the turnovers, beat Hofstra in transition. And looked like the Gales could have their way with Hofstra early on, but Hofstra settled down. Patient offense. They're going at a slower tempo than Iona. They've got some open shots, came right back on the Gales. And the guy that's got to get more touches again, going back to Glover. Early on, he got some touches, some scores. Gales have not gone back inside the Glover in quite a while here, at least four or five minutes, Gary. Hofstra ball. Chris Pelcher in the game, along with Jamel Jenkins, Rashawn Dwight, Machado, and Glover stay. Gales lead by two, just about 11 to go in the first half, and Jenkins with the ball. Left of the key, Jenkins cuts to his right, met there by Pelcher. Jenkins fires to Washington, back outside Moore. Now to Jenkins again in the middle. Shot clock still at 21. Picked by Imes, Jenkins dances to the right. Top of the key now to Washington, foul line jumper, good. He's hit two open shots from 17 feet. That's where he likes to shoot. Gales have to close down on Washington. We're tied at 13. Rashawn Dwight bounce pass. Pelcher entry and scores. Nice play by Rashawn Dwight. And Chris Pelcher with the easy lay in Iona back by two. So Dwight rather the best player on the floor for the Gales so far tonight. 15 to 13. Michael Moore goes to Jenkins. 2-3 zone Iona. McClendon now to Jenkins, dribbles on the left, double team, finds an open man, McClendon on the right, three in the lead, it is off the side rim, no. Pelcher leaping high to get the rebound, sends Machado away. Machado dances at the free throw line, now drives underneath, twisting, turning, put it up, no. Rebound, Glover, Glover scores, and they're gonna allow the basket to count on the putback by Glover, I thought I heard a whistle, but the basket by Michael. He just took the ball in the hands of David I'm 6'7", and, and yanked it away from him and scored Glover. Glover, Strength and athleticism. Glover now with seven. Now left side shot by Washington off the rim. No good. Rebound Scott Machado. Gales by four. Machado bounce pass to Glover. Underneath. Hands to Pelcher. Lay it up. No. And a foul. Nice play by Michael Glover to Pelcher. And Chris will get to the free throw line. The Gales have attempted six free throws so far and made five. Anytime they get the ball to Glover, they really look good, the Gales. That's where you want to get it. The last two trips down, Glover. 
getting a ball, stealing right on the hands of Imes to score, and then making a nice pass to Pelcher. Gales want to see more of that also better interior passing. That's what Tim Kloos is looking for. He got it that time from Glover. Pelcher's free throw, short. He's actually had pretty good success in limited action from the line, 73%. Missed that one. Iona leads 17 to 13. Kelleher back in the game now. He replaces McClendon for Hofstra. Okasara really trying to get his lineup set. He's having some problems too of finding out what five he wants to go with. And Pelcher makes the second free throw, made one to two, and Iona extends to a five point lead. And they got a little mini run here, five unanswered points. Here's Keller, double teamed to midcourt. Trinity Fields also in the game for Iona. Now Imes to Jenkins to Kelleher. And the Gales settle back in a man-man. Nine and a half minutes to go. First half from Iona. Gales trying to break a two-game losing streak. Up by five. Kelleher left of the key. His pass deflected but recovered by Jenkins. Spins on fields. Penetrates and drew the foul. Charles Jenkins with his first offensive move on the night will get to the line for a pair of the foul on Trinity Fields. That's a tough matchup for Trinity Fields. He hasn't played all that much. He's not that good a defensive player. He's okay, but not great by any means. And Jenkins is just so good. He's so physical, so under control, so with a marvelous touch. He shoots 60% for the field. Now he gets to the free throw line, does Charles Jenkins. 82% free throw shooter looking for his first point of the night, and that is good. Jenkins held to only 13 in the last game against Holy Cross. The first time in 17 games he didn't lead Hofstra in scoring. He's had a career high of 40 points in a game earlier this season. And now he's got two as he makes both free throws. And this year he's been doing most of his scoring, Jenkins, in the second half. 18 to 15, Iona with a three-point lead, about to hit the nine-minute mark, 2-3 zone for the Pride. Here's Pelcher deep on the right side. Rashawn Dwight, he's been effective so far for Iona. Dwight's pass saved. It was deflected, but Fields gets it back. Now Dwight goes to Jenkins. Here's a three. Good by Jamel Jenkins. And he had been in a slump shooting the ball, had not played very well of late, comes in and knocked down his first three. Maybe that'll build back his confidence. First three-pointer for Iona. Gales now with a six-point lead at 21-15, 8.45 to go. Jenkins and Kelleher playing catch. Now they fire left to Moore. Back up top, Kelleher faking right, going left, drives underneath the basket, off the hands, but able to recover by Moore. Shot clock is down to 14. Now Imes, a three-pointer in and out. Glover with the easy rebound as he took it away from Waconi. And now a whistle on the play. The ball oh. knocked out of bounds off Hofstra. Yeah, Hofstra battling hard, but Glover strong enough to control it. Good job defensively then by the Gales to run down the shot clock. And Kyle Smythe takes advantage of that moment to come into the game. And he replaces Rashawn Dwight getting the starting role tonight. Has got four points, at least one assist, has looked good. Yep, and played, he's the last starter besides Glover to come out. 21-16, Iona ball. The Iona Gales lead by six. Pelcher top of the key, has trouble. Now loops it back to Jenkins for Iona. Man to man now for Hofstra. 15 on the shot clock. Coming out for the ball, Michael Glover dribbles to his left and hands to Trinity Fields behind the arc. Underneath, Pelcher dribbles around his man. Reverse layup, good. Nice move by Pelcher. Yeah, Pelcher with a hesitation move after working the baseline and finishing it off. Was on the right side, went to the left side of the rim and scored. And Iona now with an eight-point lead. Just under eight minutes to play, 23 to 15. Kelleher inside the midcourt line for Hofstra, 2-3 for Iona. Michael Moore along the left. Dribbles on Glover, ends up top of the arc, now hands to Kelleher. And again, Hofstra playing a very slow, deliberate style of basketball. The shot clock is down to seven. Kelleher just inside the midcourt line, picked by Imes with four. Kelleher lean in, jumper over Fields, no good. Rebound by Glover. Glover fouled by Waconi on the play. And that'll be team foul number five against Hofstra. Not very comfortable as Kelleher as he launched an air ball. And the Gales on a little bit of run here, Gary. 23 to 15, Iona with an eight point lead, 7.23 to go, another media timeout. We'll be back, icgales.com. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. 
For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half-price wing nights at the Beachmont. Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town, along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two-for-one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday, enjoy our great burgers, half-priced as well, along with $3 domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour, so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get-together at the Beachmont, they have a private room available for your party. Or if you're having it at home, let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant, it's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. So the gal is shooting the ball well from the field and the foul line and also limiting Hoff to having a poor shooting night and the Gales holding their own off the glass with the pride. Now reflected in Hoff to leading 23 to 15. Eight point edge along with Gary Stanley. I'm at Ingalls. A game in which uh, the Gales have never trailed Gary. And they lead now by eight with 7.23 to go. After that timeout, Iona remains the same with Chris Pelcher, who's contributed five points so far for Iona. Michael Glover's got seven. Kyle Smythe has yet to score. We've been noticing Kyle lately getting off to slow starts in games and coming out in the second half. And we also have Trinity Fields getting some playing time. Machado on the bench and Jenkins with a three-pointer to his name, all adding up to an eight-point Iona lead. Smythe not getting many good looks here in the first half either. Here's Jenkins along the right sideline, man-to-man for Hofstra. High post, it goes to Pelcher. Finds the open man. There's a look from Smythe. Three is good. Kyle Smythe gets on the board. And Pelcher set it up with a nice pass, and Gales has reeled off eight unanswered points. Second three-pointer for Iona. The Gales with an 11-point lead, 26-15. Under seven minutes to play. Gales in the 2-3 zone, as it is Kelleher with the ball for Hofstra. Now hands to Jenkins in front of the Iona bench. Top of the key now Moore coming out for the ball, bumping into Jenkins. Goes to Kelleher. Fires it left side to Imes. Ten on the clock. Now whistle away from the ball, and we had a foul against Hofstra. Underneath the basket, I think it was Wacconi who got tied up with Chris Pelcher. And right now, Hofstra's really befuddled offensively as the Gales change that defense. They show a 2-3. They show a matching a matchup 2-3, man-to-man. And really, Hofstra having trouble just deciding how they're going to attack that defense. I mean, you know, I know that Jenkins is a very unselfish ball player, but he's really got to take the bull by the horn here. He needs to get in the flow for uh, Hofstra to get some points here. Yes, he does. Here's Pelcher, back of the arc. Jenkins, foul line jumper. Two more for Iona. That's Jamel Jenkins, and Iona now leads with by 13. You can't wait too long if you're Charles Jenkins for Hofstra. Here's Jenkins in the backcourt for the pride. Lead pass to Kelleher across the midcourt line down the left side. And the Gales will collapse in their 2-3. Kelleher watched by Jenkins. About to hit the six-minute mark. Now Jenkins guarded by Fields goes to Moore. Angles it left on the perimeter. Kelleher fires a pass underneath Moore for the easy lay-in. Yeah, Moore on the right side. Uh, Gales defense broke down. That's the first basket in almost four and a half minutes for Hofstra. Cutting Iona's lead back down to 11, 28 to 17, as Scott Machado about to check in for Iona. As Jermel Jenkins against the 2-3 zone, dribbles on the right side, cuts to his left, he's open to three, and a whistle before the shot. We had a foul call, I believe, against Michael Glover, an illegal pick against Iona, the third team foul against the Gales, first on Michael. Very important only his first foul because in a game like this, you'll probably see Glover out there for 38 minutes if he's not in foul trouble. Now Trinity Field sits down and back in Scott Machado for Iona. Five and a half to go, 28-17. Gales leading as Keller dribbles across the midcourt line. Then a looping pass to Jenkins. Further right, Moore, ball fake. Now moves closer, 17-footer from the wing. Nice touch by Michael Moore. He's got nine. That's a game high. And Hofstra, with four points in a row, cuts Iona's lead down to nine. Yeah, nice mechanics by Moore. High arching shot, shooting a lot more confidence, creating more stuff for himself. 
As this season has gone on, more has become more and more effective. Aleo Rodriguez about to check in for Iona. Pelcher goes to Machado, spins to his left, bounce pass underneath. Pelcher missed the easy lay-in, however. Rebound by Pelcher gets it back for Iona. Another offensive board for the Gales. New chance here. Gales by nine, under five to play. Machado, alley-oop, Glover scores! Glover just raised his hand to Machado. He was on the left side. Machado knew exactly what to do. He got behind the zone, gave him a high arcing pass, and alley up and went in. 30 to 19, Glover now with nine on the night. Here's Charles Jenkins, open man Kelleher, left angle three, no, long rebound. Glover gets mugged as it was Imes and Washington, both with hands on the face and neck of Michael Glover after Michael got the rebound. That's gonna be team foul number seven and will result in a one and one for Michael Glover. I guess he earned that foul. It'll be the second against David Imes. He certainly did, and we talked about in the pregame and the fact that Imes and Washington did all right against people who, who were about as physical as they were, or a little less physical, but they had a trouble against physical players, and you can see both Imes and Washington struggling to keep Glover under control, something that not been able to do on the glass. All right, Glover three for four from the free throw line. He's got five rebounds, nine points so far. Working on yet another double-double. Glover needs one to get the other. And the first shot is on the way, and good. So Glover now with 10 points. If he starts shooting free throws much better, Gary, he's going to add, you know, three or four more points a game to his average. That's the only thing he needs to do besides be able to be become a better perimeter player. But his inside game is just devastating. 31 to 19, second one for Michael Glover, long wait, and it was worth it as he made them both. Has a little bit of arc on the shot, Glover, from the foul line, bends it ease a little bit more, and seems to take a little more time in shooting the free throw, and it's paying off. Now Glover sits down, Rashawn Dwight back in. Gales with a 13-point lead that ties their largest along the left sideline, Washington now to Kelleher, 2-3 zone Iona. As we near the four-minute mark in the first half, dominated by Iona Gales, four and one in their home court this season. Here's Jenkins gives to a cutting Washington one-on-one -on -one move, and he bangs it home off the glass over Aleo Rodriguez. The Washington, who averages two and three points a game, has had three baskets already in the first half, keeping Hofstra the game. Iona ball, Smythe in the middle, Machado quickly on the right, Jenkins, middle Machado, ball fake left. Now he loops left, goes to Smythe. Back up top, Machado quickly to Jenkins. Shot clock running down to 17, and the Gales reset. Jenkins now, Dwight comes out for the ball. Fake the pass. Instead, will drive. Dishoff is behind Aleo Rodriguez and out of bounds. And that'll be the fifth turnover against Iona. And a good time for a break as they looked a little confused on that offensive set. But all in all, so far so good for Iona. 337 remaining. Gales 32, Hofstra 21. Back in a moment, icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Check out J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. J.P.'s is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at J.P.'s Waterside every day starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Back here at the Heinz Center, along with Gary Stanley, I'm at Ingalls, where Iona leads Hofstra 32-21. to Gales by 11. You keep waiting for Charles Jenkins to put on a Superman cape. So far, it hasn't happened. He's only scored two points, amazingly. Here, the number six scorer in the nation, averaging close to 24 points a game. Really hasn't taken all that many shots. He's not been in an attack mode yet. As we said, he likes to get it going in the second half, but his team has really struggled with pride without Jenkins being more active offensively. So I'm interested to see how they play the last three and a half minutes here. Hofstra, especially with Glover on the bench for Iona, Gary. Hofstra ball from right to left as Kelleher will bring up 
Hofstra dressed in their road blues, white and gold trim. Hempstead, Long Island. Here's Jenkins. Charles Jenkins along the left sideline. Can't get anywhere with the dribble. Washington almost dropped the ball out of bounds and now finally in the hands of Michael Moore with 18 on the clock against Iona's zone. Gives to Kelleher. Now they go back door to Michael Moore who beat Alea Rodriguez on the play and drew the foul. That'll be in the act of shooting and Hofstra with a chance to move even closer. Nice job that time with the bounce pass delivered by Kelleher. As Hofstra, we said, very patient. They'll take that shot clock down about 25 or 26 seconds gone, maybe nine seconds before they really run a play. Michael Moore with nine points. He's been Hofstra's best player in the first half. Pair of free throws. That one's good. Good free throw shooter too, Gary, up around 85% a game. Last foul was called against Jermel Jenkins, and Jenkins back to the bench. Michael Glover back in with 11 for Iona to go along with five rebounds. Gales with a 10-point lead, 3.14 to go first half. Second one by Moore, nothing but net. So he ties Glover for the game high with 11 points. 32-23, a little bit of a lull for Iona. They had a 13-point lead just a few moments ago. About to hit the three-minute mark is Machado. Goes right side to Leo Rodriguez, right corner, Rashawn Dwight, cross court, left corner. Here's Smythe, three, good, by Smythe, his second of the night. What a nice pass by Dwight, just over the top of the two, three, the good catch and delivery by Smythe, who heats up a little bit earlier in this game in the first half from three-point range. That usually a good uh, uh, sign for the Gales. Third three-pointer for Iona, Gales back with a 12-point lead. Kelleher back of the arc against Iona's two, three. Kelleher angles on the left side, McClendon, one dribble returns to Kelleher. Now to Michael Moore up top. Gives to Kelleher in front of the bench. Down under, Washington can't turn on Aleo Rodriguez. Now Moore driving underneath the basket. Kick out. Here's a three by Jenkins in and out. And the rebound by Machado. Had a good look. Machado, lead pass to White. Right corner, Smythe sets three. Good. Again, Dwight with a pass. Smythe with a delivery and a quick release by Smythe. Back-to-back threes for Smythe. He's got three trays in the game. Biggest lead now for Iona is 15. About to hit the two-minute mark. 38-23 Gales. Kelleher across the midcourt line. Not showing any urgency at all. Goes left side, Jenkins. Kelleher now along the right sideline. Kelleher gets it back. Picked by Michael Moore. Kelleher sees an opening. Dribbles around Rodriguez. Hands to Washington. Fumbled the ball. Able to recover. His pass knocked away. Stolen by Dwight. Two on one with Machado. Machado, no. Glover, no. Rebound loose. And finally, Michael Moore gets it. The Gales could not score on all those opportunities. Now Charles Jenkins dribbles by one and is held on the floor. Foul against the Gales. You know, it's hard to imagine the Gales not scoring on that play. They had three layups and they... They all, all went in and came out again. <laughs> a little bit too hard. It would have been a m- miraculous play, really, with uh, Rashawn Dwight leaping high in the air to deflect that pass and then making a beautiful pass on the other end of the court himself. Dwight gets called for the foul, but Ionda under the limit, only the fifth foul. So Hofstra will have to inbound with a minute 28 to go as Michael Moore now just drops the ball for Brad Kelleher. Kelleher inside the midcourt line between the circles. 25 on the clock, hands to Charles Jenkins. Jenkins fires right, Kelleher in front of the bench. Mal Moore comes out for the ball. He'll drive on Smythe, penetrates, blocked by Aleo Rodriguez. Last touched out of bounds off Iona. Aleo got the ball. Nice help defense by the Gales as Rodriguez came up on the weak side, knocked it away. Gales are really helping each other out defensively, really communicating tonight more than they did in the Vermont game, Gary. Minute 10 to go, first half, 15 on the shot clock. Hofstra will inbound, Iona with a 15-point lead. Here's Jenkins on the inbounds, three-pointer, good. Yep, got a look, good look that time. Dwight couldn't close fast enough on Jenkins. And that cuts Iona's lead to 12, only five for Jenkins in the first half. Under a minute to play as Machado will back away from Hofstra's 2-3 zone. And Scotty playing a little bit of clock, looking back at the Iona bench and Tim Close. Gales want to finish strong here. Good first half for them. Dwight now to Machado. 15 on the clock. Right side, Smythe. Back to Machado. Straight on three. Off the rim. No good. Took an extra bounce and a pushing foul against Iona's Aleo Rodriguez, who well, knocked down, I believe it was Michael Moore. Machado having trouble knocking down the three. Doesn't look very comfortable on the shot. He's missed three of them tonight. Gales are trying to set up Smythe, but when Machado got a look, he took the tray and missed. Now three-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Hofstra down by 12. We'll have probably which will be the final possession of the half. 
as Kelleher will bring up and take his time. 2-3 zone awaiting for Iona. Kelleher to McClendon. Now Kelleher back in the middle. Washington lining up on the high post. Now Washington goes underneath. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Jenkins, double teamed, open man. Washington starts to drive, clogged up by Machado, knocked away, stolen by Rashawn Dwight. 10 seconds remaining in the half. Iona ball. Dwight lost control, able to tip it to Smythe with four. Feeds Rodriguez, who lays it up and in with two seconds to go. And the clock runs out. A broken play and an alert play by Smythe, who found Aleo Rodriguez. Well, that has not worked very well for them. They run the shot clock down. Uh, they had a little success so early on by getting some holes in the zone, but certainly not a lead in the game. As the game progressed, their offense was very sterile. Uh, Tim Clue says when we get 16 assists a game, we usually win. Right now they got 10 at halftime. Back to the original starting five. It is Iona Ball, Dwight Machado, Aleo Rodriguez, Kyle Smythe, and Michael Glover. Iona from right to left. Here's Aleo Rodriguez, hands to Scott Machado, driving through the lane all the way through, attacks the glass and scores. Again, Machado beats Kelleher. He cannot stay up with Machado. Too quick for Kelleher of Hofstra. 16-point lead now for Iona, getting out of the gate quickly here in the second half. 30 seconds in. Brad Kelleher as Iona in a 1-3-1 zone. Here's Jenkins in front of the Hofstra bench. High post to Washington, and Washington held on the play. It'll be a foul against Iona. And I think it's Aleo Rodriguez who had a hold of him. Nope, not Aleo. It's Kyle Smythe, first foul. Greg Washington, much more active offensively, the big fellow, 6'10 for Hofstra than he normally is. Non-shooting foul, Hofstra inbounds. They throw it inside to Washington, back along the left to Kelleher. In front of the Hofstra bench, Mo Cassara and the coaching staff sitting down here as the second half gets underway. Not a lot of energy for the guys from Long Island. Here's Kelleher, dribbles into a double team, finds the man open on the right side, Imes, 15-foot bank, no good. Battle for the rebound, Aleo Rodriguez able to save, keeps it in bounds, and here's Scott Machado, looping pass to Kyle Smythe, ball fake, dribbles around more, kick outside to Rashawn Dwight. Now up top to Michael Glover, Gale still with time on the shot clock, Glover open, takes a jumper, in and out, rimmed in, and then fell out at the last moment, and Michael Moore has got the rebound. Quickly up court for Hofstra. Turning on the speed, drives in the lane, and a foul called as Michael Moore kept on going. And he should get himself a couple of free throws out of this one, and quickly Jamel Jenkins off the Iona bench. Yeah, nice job by Michael Moore at 6'5", shielding off the defender, and then to almost a baby hook on the end of the play. Moore knows how to play, knows how to create shots for himself, too. Second foul called against Aleo Rodriguez and Michael Moore on the free throw line. He is two for two tonight and 11 points overall for the Pride. Free throw by Moore is good. The transfer from Fordham nearly at his average, 13.9. He's got 12 points and now Jenkins replacing Michael Glover, who's getting an earful from Tim Cluse. That's why I pulled him out. He wouldn't pull him out unless he wanted to give him some instructions. Obviously, you don't take your best player out. Second free throw by Moore, also good, 42 to 28. Now Machado drives, attacks, drops it back. Here's the runner by Alea Rodriguez. He scores. Might have been a broken play as Glover had the pass deflected, but Alea Rodriguez able to score. Now the ball knocked away. The steal by Rashawn Dwight, head of the field for Scott Machado, the easiest basket of the night. And the Gales are converting tonight on turnovers, and that is huge. And they get a timeout. Gales converting on transition and turnovers. It's their kind of game, Gary. Second timeout taken by Mo Cassara off the Hofstra bench as the Gales now have opened up an 18-point lead, 46 to 28. Now, league play begins or re-begins. They played two games earlier as Iona beat both Canisius and Niagara here. But uh, now the MAC conference begins in earnest starting Monday for Iona and a trip up to Albany where Siena four and eight on the season. I still think they're going to be tough in that conference play. They are the defending champs, and you got to beat them before you can say otherwise. C.J. Jackson a little bit beat up, and he is doubtful for that game. And that would help. <laughs> Ryan Rossiter had some problems, although having a great season, held to only oh, four yeah. points in Siena's last game. Has 13 rebound average, though. I think he's been an amazing rebounder. Let's get back to this game with Hofstra. I am amazed that Charles Jenkins has not been more active handling the basketball. They need Jenkins, not Kelleher, to handle the ball. 
It almost looks like more how Sarah is using this game in a way as an experimental game to find out if Keller can play the point and he can play Jenkins at the two guard. Jenkins can play the position, but this is not working out very well. Jenkins needs more touches. He needs to create more. He's out of the offense right now. There's no way Hoffman can win this game unless Jenkins steps up big time and, and goes off on a tear, especially down 18 points with 18-20. Jenkins has that kind of capability to bring you back quickly, but he's got to make touches. He's got to create, and he's got to get some shots, and he hasn't done that. What's also interesting, we have not seen Sean Amon play at all for Iona. Uh, the freshman's been getting more and more playing time. As I can of tell late. you why. <laughs> Would you like to know why? Defense, defense. He's shooting it well, but his defense has not been good, and Tim Cruz puts a lot of priority on defense, and he wants to see more of that and practice in practice some on. Now McClendon back in the game for Hofstra. Dish outside to Moore, now in the hands of Jenkins. Two minutes in, Iona with an 18-point lead early in the second half. Moore bends. Picked by Imes, Moore dribbles to the top of the arc, and then the ball deflected away by Machado, able to be run down by Moore, deep in the right corner. His pass deflected by Jamel Jenkins, but it goes right to the Iona bench, and Tim Close got it, but had a nice pat for Jamel Jenkins for the attempt. Now Hofstra with only seven seconds on the shot clock. Jenkins much more active coming off the bench. He got the message tonight about being benched. Now Hofstra will inbound. Here's Jenkins. Four on the shot clock, goes to Moore. Two on the clock, Moore, the runner in the lane, hit the side rim, no good, but the follow-up tipped home and scored by Imes. David Imes, his third basket. And it's a 16-point Iona lead, 46 to 30. Two and a half gone by, Smythe cuts in the middle. Hands to Scott Machado, drives back to the left. Now to Jenkins, spins top of the free throw line, penetrates, shot blocked by Washington. Loose ball, Jenkins gets it back to Aleo Rodriguez, and he is fouled in the lane going up for the shot. So Jenkins kept on working and finally got the ball to Aleo, who will get a pair. Nice to see Rodriguez active to the glass because he has, shoots a very high percentage. Now, granted, it's around the basket, but I think the more he would attack the rim more, he could score a lot more, and he needs more touches, and he needs to be more aggressive doing that, and that time he showed uh, some aggressiveness. Second foul against Charles Jenkins, and Leo Rodriguez now up to 50% from the line, short. All right, make this one, he's back to 50. Shooting well from the floor tonight, Leo Rodriguez. 50% about his high water mark as an Iona Gale. The senior second one on the way, good. Got seven points and he's three for three from the floor, Rodriguez. 47-30, Iona leads by 17. Hofstra inbounds, McClendon in the backcourt. Machado on him, little help by Washington who almost knocked Machado out with a hard pick and gets called for the foul. Scott Machado took a standing eight count there. Wow. He sure did. <laughs> Look at all those expressions on his face. Like, why me? Who wants to do that to me? <laughs> Washington called for his second foul. Mo Cacera very unhappy about the call, but yes, it, was, he is. it was very obvious. <laughs> so is Machado, even though it's called in his favor. <laughs> Here's Machado between the circles. Iona gets the ball. Here's Rashawn Dwight dribbles to the right. Back to the left. Smythe, three-pointer. Good. Fourth by Smythe. He's got 12 points, and Iona with a 20-point lead, 50 to 30. And Smythe now has hit uh, four from downtown. Here's Jenkins driving on the right. Open man Moore up for a three. No good. Rebound in the corner. Washington able to save right in front of the Hofstra bench and did well to loop it back to McClendon. Hofstra attacking again. McClendon left of the key. Roll under to Washington. He's got the height advantage on Dwight. Turnaround good. Aleo Rodriguez tried to help but got there late. And Washington now with eight points. Washington spun away from the smaller man and knocked down an open eight-footer. 50 to 32, three and a half minutes gone by in the second half. Iona has never trailed. Machado back of the free throw line, now sees an opening in the lane, put it up, no good. Rebound, out of bounds, still Iona ball with 19 on the shot clock. With Glover on the bench, now he's coming back in. The Gales are playing small with four basic guards and Rodriguez, but Glover comes back in and White goes out. So Rashawn Dwight leaving. Dwight in the game, four points. Got three assists as well. And now they just reset the shot clock. I'm not sure if they should have. They had 19 originally and put it back to 35. And apparently that's where it's going to be. So a full shot clock for Iona. Machado will inbound. Can't find Glover underneath and loops back outside to Jamel Jenkins. Just inside the midcourt line, man-to-man -man for Hofstra. Jenkins hands to Scott Machado. Cuts in the middle, then back to Smythe. And Smythe held 
by Charles Jenkins. That's going to be the third on Jenkins. Mm, and that's a, bit, you know, that's a bad foul. The Gale's running a motion offense out on the perimeter. Smythe not going anywhere. He's not a dribble penetrator anyway. Very bad foul by Jenkins. Been a very bad game for Charles Jenkins. We expected this big battle between Glover and Jenkins. Glover has been okay, 11 points, six rebounds. Jenkins has been just about invisible, and now we pick up an Iona foul away from the basket. It might be Glover. I'm mystified by Jenkins' play. I don't know, is he sick? Is he, was he sick earlier today? Is, I don't know what's going on here. Now it's Aleo Rodriguez call for the foul, and that'll be the third on Aleo, which takes us to our first media timeout of the second half. All Iona, 15.56 to go. Iona 50, Hofstra 32, icgales.com. Back in a minute. Check out J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. J.P.'s is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at J.P.'s Waterside every day starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Yellow Book Yellow Pages is packed with buying information, complete yellow pages, business white pages, community information, area maps, money-saving coupons, even a restaurant menu section. And the easy-to-read print helps you find whatever you're looking for. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Yellow Pages reaches your potential customers at the exact moment they are ready to buy. For more information about promoting your business in Yellow Book, call 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Yellow Book, not the other book. So back here in New Rochelle, it's been all Iona tonight. They led start to finish. They have an 18-point lead over Hofstra. Surprising game. Both Gary and I thought this would be a very close game. Iona's up 50 to 32. Can't say enough good things about Rashawn Bright getting a chance to start tonight. Judiciously shot the ball, but his ball handling, four assists in the first half, his defense, his active hands, his leadership, he's been a tremendous asset to this team tonight to really stabilize the situation and give a lot of cohesiveness to Iona both offensively and defensively. Hofstra ball in the backcourt. Jenkins guarded by Iona's Jenkins. Now Charles Jenkins accelerates to the free throw line all the way through and scores. Coast to coast, by far his best offensive move of the night. He's got seven, and Iona has given up the last four, still with a 16-point lead. Gale ball, Jermel Jenkins just inside the midcourt line goes to Machado in front of the bench. Chris Pelcher setting a pick on the high post. Machado penetrates the lane. Pass at the last moment for Pelcher knocked out of bounds underneath. And it is still Iona ball with 17 on the shot clock. Tough pass. Tough pass to handle by Pelcher, too. Gale's lucky to get it back. Machado inbounds right to Smythe, who scores on the set play on the inbounds pass. And Smythe now with 14. That is game high for Iona. Smythe just walked in the right side, laid it up and in. Big breakdown by the Pride defensively. Now McClendon spins across the timeline, puts it behind his back, lost the ball. Machado with the steal, two on one. Machado gives to Jamel Jenkins, lay it in. And another, now a turnover against Hofstra. Well, Hofstra really rattled by this defensive pressure by the Gales. Woo. Greg Washington turned it over. Stepping on the end line as he tried to inbound the ball. You don't want him handling the ball anyway back there. You want a guard handling it, not the six foot ten inch center. So the Gales get it back, up by 18, 15.03 to go. Machado inbounds, goes to Glover, and Glover gets knocked down by two players, and it goes out of bounds. No foul, and just a clean block. They were ready for Mr. Glover that time. Yeah, well, Coney and Washington, two big players, the two biggest players for Hofter knocking him down and doing a nice block. Now Michael Moore will inbound full court man to man for Iona. Gales by 18. They go to Jenkins in the backcourt. Jenkins guarded by Machado. Picked by Washington. Didn't need it. Jenkins accelerates to the forecourt. Goes to Washington. Washington hands back to Jenkins. Jenkins driving through the lane. Put it up. Good. And a foul. So Charles Jenkins finally awakening a little bit. He's got nine points and a chance to add a tenth on a free throw as Iona's lead back down to 18. You know, he is really a fire plug. He is so strong physically, not all that tall, but well-built. And when he puts the ball on the floor, 
He's a power dribbler, what I call a power dribbler, because he gets you on his hip and very hard to stop. He's going to bump you off, separate, and get to the rim. Very hard to stop. Chris Pelcher got called for the foul. Fourth team foul as Jenkins in and out on the free throw, and Michael Glover pulls down his seventh rebound. Gales lead 54-36. Here's Jamel Jenkins, three ball, no good. Long rebound to the corner, and it's run down by Hofstra's McClendon. Now to Jenkins, quickly to Moore. One-on-one -on -one move, pull-up jumper over Smythe off the rim, no good. Battle for the rebound, and we had a foul against Michael Glover of Iona, which will be his second foul. I think Hofstra getting a little more aggressive foul here, and seeing that, Tim Kluth now has gone back to Rashawn Dwight, who's played so well tonight, get him back in the game because he's a stabilizer as the Gales are going to play small again. Four wing players and Glover. Second foul against Michael Glover. Fifth team foul against Iona. Washington missed the 12-footer. Follow up by Moore in and out. And Glover pulls down the rebound for Iona. Here's Machado. Machado fouled in the backcourt by Michael Moore. And that'll be the fourth against Hofstra in this half. Hofstra not as quick as Iona. And right now the Gales are taking advantage of their quickness, not only with uh, speed, foot speed, but their ability to pass the ball up the floor and dribble too, speed dribble. Iona led by 14 at the half. The lead got to as big as 20 in this half, and now it is 18. Nearing the 14 minute mark, Machado, high post, Glover spins off his man and scores. Michael Glover with 13. He just split two defenders, McClendon and Wyconey. Neither one could stop me, split them in half. Nice job by Glover. So the lead back to 20, Charles Jenkins for Hofster goes right side to Moore. Got a pick waiting from Wacconi, but Moore will keep it himself. Now dumps to Jenkins, head of the arc. 18 on the shot clock. Washington with the pick. They go left side, Moore, three-pointer. No good, that was McClendon, rather. Rebound batted around, goes out of bounds, and it's going to be off Iona, they say. Yeah, right now Hofstra has a height advantage, and they really have got to utilize it. They hope to get back in this game. They've got to take advantage of that and get second and third chances offensively and get some easy shots on around the rim. They're going to reset the shot clock at 35. Hofstra's Kelleher back in, will inbound, having trouble finding anybody open. Very nearly a five-second violation, and able to get it back to McClendon. Now to Kelleher. Kelleher up top. Jenkins turns, three ball. Good. Made it look easy. Jenkins heating up. Jenkins with 12, his second three. And then we had an Iona timeout. 56 to 39, the lead at 17 for Iona, still 13, 36 to go in the ballgame. Glad you're joining us tonight on icgales.com. Gary Stanley along with Ed Engels, who's working for both schools tonight. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Ed actually is the <laughs> resident professional, loosely using the word, of the Hofstra <laughs> radio station. I call myself a semi-professional. And we want to know why, I'm just curious, Hofstra's biggest athletic program, since they don't have football anymore, is basketball. And why would the radio station choose to do the New York Islanders instead of Hofstra basketball tonight? Great opportunity when you have a chance to do professional sports, you do that. Um, 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 oh, yes, absolutely. And we're, we're doing the game. It's not and the money, too, probably. Well, the money, no, we don't make that much money on it. The thing, we also do the Hofstra games on either... WRHU, or we rent a station, WGCH. But you have a great station like that. You ought to use it for the Hofstra well, basketball. Well, we do a lot of Hofstra games on WRHU. I bet you Hofstra comes closer to Iona. Maybe not, and the Islanders will come to the Penguins tonight. But we had a whistle away from the ball, and there will be you a foul right call. about that. <laughs> 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 but I'm, I'm, I'm mystified why Jenkins didn't... Charles Jenkins didn't take over this game late first half. They Iona really inbounds. Glover in the lane. Had it knocked away, but recovered by Rashawn Dwight. Good job by Rashawn keeping the play alive, and Iona has it. Gales lead by 17, nearing the 13-minute mark as Jenkins just inside the midcourt strike for Iona. Jenkins looking for a cutting Machado. One bounces to Scott, now driving in the lane, and a whistle on the play traveling against Machado as he slipped on a spot on the floor, and the Gale is a little bit sloppy as of late. But only the eighth turnover for Iona tonight, 11 on Hofstra, and the assist department I like for the Gales, 15 assists already, and we've got just under 13 minutes to play. 2-3 zone for Iona, Kelleher along the right, cuts in the middle, chased by Jamel Jenkins, now crossover dribble by Kelleher, beat him, the shot no good, however, and the rebound bounces to Scott Machado, 
for the Gale. Scotty brings up, lead pass, caught on the fly by Rashawn Dwight, and he goes up and is clobbered on the way to the basket, and Dwight will get a couple of free throws after the nitty, nifty setup by Scott Machado. Well, Tim Kloos wants to run the floor. He wants a fast break. He wants up-tempo. He is getting that tonight. He didn't get it against Vermont. He's getting it tonight. He caught with that time Hofstra with a back to the ball. And when you run down the court with your back to the ball, it's kind of like a defensive back covering a wide receiver. You really have no idea what's going on. Pair of free throws by Dwight. First one right on the money. Five points for Rashawn. Now Trinity Fields back in for Iona. And Jamel Jenkins sits down. Second free throw, no good. Back rim. Dwight made one of two. And Iona leads by 18, 12.35 to go. Charles Jenkins brings up. That was Greg Washington's third foul, by the way. Jenkins outside. Crossover dribble on Rashawn Dwight. Fights his way underneath the basket. All the way through and drew the foul. And this is the Charles Jenkins that we have come to expect trying to take over the game. But it's probably too late from the Hofstra point of view. But he has turned it on with seven second half points, 12 overall, and we'll get a pair of free throws here with 12.24 to go. If I'm his teammates, I make sure he gets the ball. I set something up, I run a high pick for him, anything to get him going because every time he touches the ball, he can score. Nobody else on this team has that kind of capability. Free throw by Jenkins, good. He is now three of four from the line, 13 points overall. He's only taken six shots, however. I know, that's amazing, isn't it? In the game. Yep. Two assists, one rebound, very pedestrian numbers for the two-time Haggerty Award winner. The free throw by Jenkins is good. Well, and the first half, Gary, Jenkins took only uh, three shots. 57-41, the lead down to 16. Here's Machado driving, alley-oop, Glover with emphasis, set up by Machado. Machado on the left side, Glover on the right side. Glover comes down, Machado up in the air, just dumps it off to Glover. No defensive pressure on Glover. He takes over on the inside. Jams it down. 15 for Michael Glover. The lead back to 18. 12 minutes to play. Charles Jenkins along the left. Gets a pick there from Waconi. Jenkins dribbles up top. Goes cross court Kelleher. Spins on Machado. Scotty clogged him up. And Kelleher now backs up in a whistle and a foul underneath the basket against Iona's Rashawn DeWight, who got tied up with Stephen Waconi for Hofstra. And that'll be the third foul against Rashawn DeWight. Another official timeout. We're down to 11.51 to go. Iona leading Hofstra, 59-41. Take a break. Back in a moment, icgales.com. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half-price wing nights at the Beachmont. Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town, along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two-for-one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday, enjoy our great burgers, half-priced as well, along with $3 domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour, so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get-together at the Beachmont, they have a private room available for your party. Or if you're having it at home, let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant. It's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona a game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. Gale shooting 59% from the field. They're on fire. A lot of easy transition baskets. However, slight edge and rebounding now going Hofstra's way since the Gales have played small much of the night. But Hofstra only re rebounding the Gales by plus four. But it's been Iona all the way. Good transition game for Gales. Both ends offensively and defensively. Steals into the easy baskets. Hofstra's offense sluggish all night. Gales have been the aggressive attacking team, and they look like the kind of team that Coach Tim Pluse wants to see, Gary. Free throws upcoming for Stephen Waconi, freshman. First attempt from the line tonight, 57% on the season. Limited shots. Iona with an 18-point lead. Free throw, Waconi. No good on the one and one, and Michael Glover pulls down the rebound. Uh, let's check Michael's numbers. He should be above 10 by now in rebounds, so another double-double for Scott, 
uh, Michael Glover. 15 points to go along and still 11.38 to go. Trinity Fields for Iona. Will back away. Hofstra in a 2-3. 15 on the shot clock. Scott Machado, a little one-on-one -on -one move on Kelleher. Drives in the lane and drew the foul. Scott Machado will be on the line for a pair. That's the seventh foul against the Pride. Been a bad matchup all night long for Kelleher trying to guard Machado. Gale spread the floor beautifully that time, and Machado gets to the lane and uses his body to hold off Kelleher, and Kelleher has to foul him so that Machado doesn't get an easy shot. Six points, two of two from the line. Machado for a pair. First one on the way, and no good by Scotty. 66% from the line. And some changes from Mo Cassara now. Greg Washington and Waconi sit down, and Imes back in along with Michael Moore. Well, they need Moore in there because he's one of the two scorers they have. They're really the really scorers are Moore and Jenkins, so you've got to have Moore on the floor if you're going to make a run offensively. Second free throw by Machado right on the money. He is 3 of 4 from the line, and Iona with a 19-point lead. Biggest lead was 20. It's now 60 to 41, 11.24 to go from Iona. Gale's looking to go 5 and 1 at home and finish non-conference play as they get ready for the back on Monday at Siena. Bounce pass, top of the key, Charles Jenkins. Slithers through two players and scores. Fields and Glover all over Charles Jenkins, but Jenkins now with a game-high 16. And a really good handle on the ball. A strong, secure handle by Jenkins to split the two Gale defenders. 11 of those points by Jenkins in the second half. 17-point Iona lead, under 11 to play. Michael Glover up top for Iona. Drives on Ein, spins, put it up. No, tip-up wouldn't go. Rebound, battle for it. Hofstra gets it. Here's Charles Jenkins. Dribbling with speed. On the run, Kelleher stops three. No, Machado with the rebound for Iona. Kelleher's missed a lot of shots. Machado fires a pass for Sean Dwight to the basket, up and in. Gotta love to Sean Dwight. He does it all. Finishing off around the rim up another beautiful pass by Machado. And his assist numbers are piling up now. 7-4 for Sean Dwight. Back to a 19-point lead nearing the midway point of the second half. 62 43 Kelleher backs away from Scott Machado, man-to-man -man Iona. Kelleher on the big I logo at midcourt, 18 on the clock. Here's Moore, loop down Charles Jenkins. Turnaround over Fields, no good. Rebound, battle for it. We had a reach-in foul over the back. David Imes fouling Kyle Smythe. So we're going to walk the length, and Iona will get a one-and-one -one after the eighth foul by Hofstra. Obviously, Hofstra has a real deficiency here trying to come back from big deficits. Because if they had a pressure defense, a full court pressure defense, if they felt comfortable using it and thought it was effective, they would have pulled it on Iona at this point. Ten minutes left to go, down by 16, 18, 20 points the whole second half. They have not once pressured the Gales. They've been back in their uh, kind of sagging defense. Smythe on the one and one, good. He's got 15. That is tops on the Gales, tied with Michael Glover, 15 each. And Charles Jenkins, 16 for Hofstra, 13 for Michael Moore. Nice bounce back by the Gales after that poor performance against Vermont. Shockingly um, so. I thought this would be a really tough game. Yeah, I thought too. But Tim Kluse, his message got across to his players. And he had, uh, he had them quite a bit this week. They worked out every day uh, except Christmas Day. That was benevolent. And Benevolent Second, Dust Spot, I think they call that. Second free throw by Smythe is good. Biggest lead now is 21 for Iona. We're under 10 minutes to go. Here's McClendon, gives to Greg Washington, thought about a jumper. Instead, we'll dump it back to Moore. Dribbles to the right side on Glover, runs into Michael, and feeds to McClendon. Crossover dribble on Rashawn Dwight, then a reach in foul by Scott Machado, who looked at the official like a kid who got his hand stuck in a cookie jar. And Scott knew what he did and didn't get away with it. I think he got his hand deeply in the cookie jar, Gary. The, the issue here, I think, at this point for Iona, what, you're not concerned about too many fouls because what they're doing is they're being very aggressive defensively. That's what Tim Cruz wants to see. He wants to see the hands and arms busy. He wants to see the feet moving too defensively, but he wants his people active. Free throw by McClendon, good. So the freshman. Shamai Clendon gets on the board. He's only a 46% free throw shooter. Look good on that one. Second one is good. Made them both. So Iona's lead back to 19, 64, 45, nine and a half to go. Extended garbage time. 
as Marv Albert used to say, or probably still does say, but I don't watch him anymore. <laughs> Here's Machado, crossover dribble, lost it, taken away by Moore as Machado tried to be too fancy. Up ahead, McClendon off the run. It's a long two, side rim no good. Another rebound for Glover. Lead pass by Michael to Trinity Field, spins off Moore, big collision right in front of the Iona bench, and Moore, I think, rolled out of bounds. Which way are they going to call? Moore helped to his feet by Tim Kloos there, and I think it's Iona ball. I wouldn't say this game is over yet because you got Jenkins who is, can go up and score 40 points. So I'm not ready to have a half to back up the bus yet. But I would have the bus idling and warming up and the heater on down by uh, 19 points with 9.14 to go. Nearing the nine minute mark, Gales lead 19, 64 45. Rashawn Dwight, nice one bounce pass to Glover, and Glover gets fouled, feeding Greg Washington to the basket. And Glover gets fouled from behind. Good foul by Washington. Otherwise, that was going to be a, a photograph. And Tim Cruz loved that pass by Rashawn Dwight. Nice bounce pass. The numbers on Dwight tonight, Gary, are from the field. Two up two. He's got three now. He's one up two from the line. He's got seven points, five assists, four steals. Doing a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. as Rashawn does when he's healthy. Michael Glover, 15 points. First of two. That one's no good. So Glover has started out pretty good at the free throw line. Five of seven for the evening. Glover has nine rebounds, if you're wondering about the double-double. 9.04 to go. 15 points, nine rebounds. 24 minutes, two turnovers. Gales with only nine turnovers of the night. That's a good number. And the rebound number is only plus one Hofstra. Free throw, Glover, good. Made one at two there. So Glover and Smythe each have 16 for Iona, and the Gales by 20. 65-45, nine minutes to play. McClendon will bring up for the pride across the midcourt line, guarded by Smythe. One bounces, Charles Jenkins, double team, goes to McClendon. No look pass, Waconi missed the dunk. And what did they call? They called the late foul against Rashawn Dwight. I thought they might have called Waconi for hanging on the rim, but Dwight got called for the foul, and that's going to be the fourth on Rashawn. Tim Clues kind of shaking his head over that one. That was the nicest play we've seen Hofstra run all night. On the nice, two good passes. Couldn't finish the shot. Dwight gets nailed for the foul. Four on Rashawn Dwight. And Waconi will get a pair. He just made two straight. First one by Stephen Waconi on the way and good. Now Leo Rodriguez replaces Rashawn Dwight. Seven points for Rashawn. It's a hand going to the Iona bench. They like Marconi for the future. They think that he has some skill level in terms of being able to be a, fill out and grow a little bit more and become a strong rebounder and a guy who can score around the rim. And hitting his free throws tonight at least, 4-4. Four four. Iona's lead 18 now, 8.46 to go. As Scott Machado brings up for Iona, across the midcourt line, goes to Fields, in front of the Iona bench. Glover, back of the free throw line. Glover now hands to Scotty. Glover setting a screen for Machado, but first we have a whistle and a foul against uh, Hofstra underneath the basket. That'll put Aleo Rodriguez on the line for a one and one Hofstra's had trouble all night defensively getting comfortable against the Gales, a dribble penetration. Something the Gales could not do successfully against Vermont. Tonight, better dribble penetration, better sharing of the ball, and not so much sideline to sideline movement, but attacking the rim more. Free throw, Aleo Rodriguez got a nice bounce. Dead ball on the back rim and dropped through. Two or three from the line, and Aleo now over 50% from the free throw line. He is 11 for 21 on the season. It'd be nice if you make this. Be a real watershed mark for him. Second free throw by Rodriguez. Good. All right. So you know things are going well when Aleo's canning free throws. And yep. It's been a great game for Iona. Gales back to a 20-point lead. Eight and a half to go in the game as McClendon brings up for Hofstra. Across the midcourt stripe. Man-to-man -man Iona. McClendon bounces to Charles Jenkins. Jenkins fires a pass to Moore. Passed up an open three, driving in the lane, then the kick out McClendon, overplayed by Jenkins, side jump, no. Rebound, put up by Waconi, he scores. First field goal for Steven Waconi. And the lead at 18, eight minutes to go. Scott Machado for the Gales, looking back at the Iona bench. 
Machado, little one-on-one -on -one move on McClendon, beat him on the dribble, hands to Alejo Rodriguez, fumbled the pass. Alejo able to recover, goes back to Machado, driving through the lane, takes it himself and scores. Nice pick by Rashad by Rodriguez, and just too speedy as Machado then goes for the ball to Black McSteel. But what a play by Machado on the offensive end, Gary. Just so quick with a spin move and gets to the rim. Had a foul called against Scott Machado. That's his third foul. Brings us to another timeout. 7.42 to go. It is Iona 69, Hofstra 49, icgales.com. A break, and we'll be back. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Holiday Inn Select in downtown Stanford is the official hotel sponsor of the Iona Gale. Whether just visiting Iona or coming to cheer on the maroon and gold, the Holiday Inn features recently renovated guest rooms and suites that reflect the crisp, contemporary design of an urban downtown getaway. Each room features high-speed internet and wireless connectivity, in addition to access to a health and fitness center, indoor pool, business center, and 700 bar and grill, a casual dining atmosphere with a pub-style cuisine. The Holiday Inn Select downtown Stanford is conveniently located at 700 East Main Street in downtown Stanford, just off exit 8 of I-95. Holiday Inn Select downtown Stanford is also accessible by Metro North's New Haven line. For more information or make a reservation, call 203-358-8400. Well, if you're a member of the Gale Nation, you've got to love the way your Iona Basketeers have played tonight. They have been on top of this game right from the beginning and what figured to be a close game. It has been all Iona. They never trailed. They bolted out to a 15-point lead late in the first half. They've extended that to 20 right now. And they never really given Hofstra a chance to get back in this game. Uh, the Gales have done it with a lot of energy, a lot of defensive activity, a lot of speed up and down the floor. Gales got the tempo. They got the up tempo. They got the transition in terms of getting easy baskets. And they've also, Gary, had a good half-court offense tonight, Iona. Free throw by McClendon is good. Five of five tonight. 69 to 50 as Iona trying to break their two-game losing streak. The loss at Syracuse and then the home loss to Vermont. But a week later, things a lot better as two more free throws by Shemai McClendon makes it 69-51. 7.35 to go, Iona with Jamel Jenkins, Scott Machado, Trinity Fields, Alejo Rodriguez, and Michael Glover up top. Glover and Rodriguez, double high post. 18 on the clock, Jamel Jenkins along the right, middle to Machado, faking a pass and said drive to the free throw line. Jumper good by Machado, he's got 11. Defense never came out and contested it. They looked for him to drive it to the basket. Instead, he hit a 10-foot pull-up to Scott Machado. 71-51, about to hit the seven-minute mark. Charles Jenkins fires. McClendon, three. Side rim, no good. Aleo Rodriguez gobbles in the rebound. Yeah. Here's Jenkins with speed down the middle. Shuffle pass, batted to the Iona bench, and out of bounds by McClendon. Hofstra also struggling from beyond the arc to not only 25%. Gales have knocked down 45% of uh, free balls. Well, let's just say Hofstra has struggled. Boy, have they ever. They just never looked like they were in this game at the beginning. It looked like they were still on the bus when this game started. I mean, they never met, matched the energy or intensity. Uh, they've been confused. Not a very good showing from no, Ocasero's team. I'm uh, hard to believe how badly they're playing tonight. They won six out of seven and obviously had to be pumped about the matchup with Iona, who's been doing very well. But Hofstra has not come to play. Now Jenkins drives, little turnaround with the left hand, no good. Rebound by Glover, tried to bat it off a Hofstra player and out of bounds, and I think he did it. Michael Glover, falling out of bounds, banged it off a Hofstra backside, and the Gales get the ball back, but only two seconds on the shot clock. Now let's see if they're going to reset that. Tim Close arguing his case. It's not going to happen. They're going to have to sit with the two. Well, with a 20-point lead, you can deal with two on the shot clock. They may still score. Trinity Fields looking, 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 finds Machado. Corner, puts up a three. Air ball. 
Would have been a 35 second violation, but Hofstra got the rebound. Lead pass to Jenkins. Reverse layup blocked from behind by Aleo Rodriguez. We go the other way. Trinity Fields gives to Machado. Got bumped and scores. Oh, Machado on the left side. Took a hit going down. Put up a soft shot. Scored. Now Jenkins, foul line jumper for Hofstra. Answers back. Charles Jenkins with 18. 73-53. Six minutes to go. Iona by 20. But Jenkins a little too late for the pride. Now Machado just holding the ball, dribbling idly in front of the Iona bench, playing the clock. Scott Smythe, uh, Kyle Smythe about to check in. Here's Scott Machado advancing to the free throw line behind a Glover pick, the jumper good. They're just not coming out and contesting those shots. Machado taking advantage of whatever they give him. He's taking advantage of it. And Scott with 15, Glover and Smythe 16 apiece, so balance for Iona. By 22, the runner in the lane by Michael Moore. No good off the rim, and a whistle foul will be called against Iona. I think it might be Glover's foul. Third against Michael Glover. So the fouls begin to pile up on Iona, but I think they can live with that with the threes and fours that several players have. And with this kind of lead, you can go to the bench. Free throws coming up now for Hofstra's Steven Wacconi. First one is up and good for Wacconi. Wacconi making a bid for more playing time from Ocasaro. He's certainly going to look for some players who can play better than they played tonight. And Wacconi is one of those players who's played better than maybe anticipated. Wacconi with five points on the night coming off the bench. Second free throw rolled around and fell in. Made them both, and now it is Brad Kelleher back in, replacing Shemai McClendon for Hofstra. Even 20-point lead, 5.22 to go, as Scott Machado again brings up very slowly for Iona, near-capacity crowd, a couple of hundred shy. Here's Machado driving from high post to low, give off to Aleo Rodriguez, and he jams it in, set up by Scott Machado. Yeah, Machado uh, drew double. Team attention, Rodriguez open, right side, took the pass, dropped it in. So the Gales now with four players in double figures, 11 for Aleo, set up by Machado. 22-point lead, foul line jumper, Charles Jenkins good over Carl Smythe. So quick Charles Jenkins has his 20. And had a quick jumper there. He'll get his uh, average tonight, but won't matter because he never was able to rally the forces. He's supposed to be the leader of this team and get him back in the ball game, and it never happened. And he, can, he can get 30, and it wouldn't be impressive because he no, didn't do it no. when it was needed. Yeah, especially the first half. He did nothing the first half. Here's Machado. Goes to Michael Glover on the high post. Dumps back to Machado. Shot clock down to 10. Picked by Aleo Rodriguez. Machado back of the arc with eight. Foul line jumper. Machado off the mark. No good. Rebound by David Imes. Gives it away. The steal by Jenkins. Gives to Machado. One pass too many. Now Jamel turns and scores. Oh, nice give and go by Jenkins and Machado. So a good chemistry. That's what Team Cruz wants to see. And Iona at their average of 79 points. 79-57, 22-point lead. Under four to play. Kelleher, back of the arc. Michael Moore, three. Good. Nice job by Moore to step out. Hit a deep three. Michael Moore with 16. 79-60. Again, Iona just dribbling slowly across the midcourt line, trying to stretch out this ball game here. No pressure defense by Hobson. Most teams, when they're down by this much, are going to pressure you, but obviously the pride doesn't have much of a pressure defense. Or much pride. <clears throat> 14 seconds. That's a mean blow. That is, At that least is. tonight. You want to check that back, huh? <laughs> they used to have Flying Dutchman. Here is Machado, five on the clock, dribbles around Rodriguez, pick, Machado scores. Almost unencumbered, Machado undressing Hofstra's defense, and I think it's time to warm up that bus now. Oh, it is, yeah, I mean, that, they didn't switch off at all. They've been very sluggish on switching off, beaten all night long in the pick and roll game by the Gale. Three minutes to play, 81-60, Hofstra gets it, Charles Jenkins with 20, contemplating a three, will drive on Machado, lost the dribble, stolen by Jamel Jenkins, up ahead to Aleo Rodriguez who jams it in. And the Gales are on a scoring festival right now. And 13 they're loving it. for Aleo, and Charles Jenkins lost it to Jamel Jenkins and just gave up on the pursuit of Aleo Rodriguez. 83 to 60, 234 to go. Kelleher dribbles around one, around two, back of the arc. Sean Amon about to check in first time for Iona. Bounce pass, top of the key now. 
Here is Charles Jenkins driving right into the teeth of Aleo Rodriguez, and Aleo gets called. No, a clean block, and a jump ball by Aleo. What a play. He just gobbled up the ball, and Charles Jenkins, the alternate arrow, however, will keep it Hofstra's way, and we take our final break. 2.22 to go, all Iona. 83 Gales, 60 for Hofstra. Back in a moment, icgales.com. Go like Iona goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full-service provider for all of your travel needs, whether you are one, two, or a team. All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares, but they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest. Individual or group, business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. Having a party? Well, smart shoppers know the name Shannon Beverages of New Rochelle. Shannon proudly carries the largest selection of domestic imported and craft brewed beer in Westchester. All your favorite brands of soda and ice, too. Stock up now. Our discount prices can't be beat. Party balls. And for your convenience, quarter kegs and half kegs are always available. Remember, for discount beer and soda, all the top brands, domestic and imported, Shannon Beverages, just a quarter mile south of Iona at 437 North Avenue in New Rochelle. Call 632-1115. That's 632-1115. Shannon Beverages. Well, if you play basketball in the New York City metropolitan area, you want to be the best team in that area. It's a little early to bestow that honor on Iona tonight, but they have certainly knocked Hofstra out of contention with this kind of game. Iona clearly make a message that in the St. John's, I don't think Seton Hall can match up. It's pretty much down right now where you're looking at Iona and St. John's battling to see which is the best team in this area at the moment. Kelleher will inbound, 14 on the shot clock for Hofstra, had trouble getting it in. Now finally gets Jenkins along the right sideline, guarded by Sean Amon, finally in the game. Kelleher stops and pops from three, and it was off the side rim, and Scott Machado gobbles in the rebound for the Gales. Nearing the two-minute mark, Machado crossed the midcourt line. Randy DeZouvre also about to get some playing time for the Gales. As we are now under two minutes, and we are just standing around watching the shot clock tick down to 15. Tim Cruz figures he has enough. He doesn't want to run it up on a Mo Casaro and the, the pride. Nine on the clock. Here is Kyle Smythe. Fires to Scott Machado, driving through the lane. One bounce to Leo, who scores. Machado, though, has got other ideas. He is just taking a part that's off the defense. 15 points for Leo, 85 to 60. Minute 34 to go. Kelleher along the left sideline. Kelleher. Watched by Aleo Rodriguez. Now Machado on the switch, guarding Kelleher. Kelleher backs in, Machado slip. They go top of the lane. Charles Jenkins over Amon, no good. And Amon got the rebound for Iona. Sean Amon, lead pass goes to Michael Glover. In flight, dish pass goes to Aleo Rodriguez. Dumps it back outside Amon. And now timeout for Iona, specifically just to get uh, some substitutions in. Machado gets a hand. Michael Glover leaving the game. Randy DeZouvre in, Pelcher replacing Aleo Rodriguez with 15. And the thing you have to like about the Gales tonight is they maintained this pace all the way through, Gary. It wasn't a roller coaster ride where they built a great big lead and then saw it shrink. They've held this lead at double digits and slowly increased on it, but at no time did Hofstra, except maybe in the early first five minutes, make a threat to take the lead away from the Gales here. Hardly ever expected a beatdown like this against no. Hofstra. The pride will fall to 7-5, and five and Iona will be 8-5. and five. 15 on the shot clock. Armand, three-pointer. That'll be off the mark, trying to get on the board. And the rebound by Waconi for Hofstra. Last time the game was tied, got it was 13. There's the drive by Michael Moore. Penetrates. They let him go, and he scored. Michael Moore with 18. 85-62. Jamel Jenkins brings up for the Gales, across the midcourt line, down to 35 seconds remaining. Jenkins dribbling on Kelleher. They're just trying to waste the clock at the same time. Jenkins advances to the free throw line, then backs away, back towards nearly midcourt. 13 on the shot clock, 22 in the game. Picked by Pelcher, Jamel Jenkins going, spinning in the lane with the right hand off the glass. No, follow up by Pelcher, puts it home. Nobody put a body on Pelcher. He came off the wing, the big fella off the glass and in. 87-62, 11 seconds to go. 
Here is Michael Moore, McClendon up top. They go to Kelleher, five seconds, three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Trinity Fields, one, that's it. What a big win for Iona as the Gales totally outpower Hofstra, 87 to 62, 25-point win. Gale